Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest in our feature discovery series, this time dedicated to the Garmin G1000 NXi. I'm Matt Nishan, one of the founders and lead developers of Working Title Simulations, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be talking to you today about this exciting addition to the sim, the most complete and advanced default avionics ever brought to a consumer simulator. But first, let's get to what I know you all really want to hear about, the features of the Garmin G1000 NXi. The G1000 NXi brings a host of faithfully simulated autopilot modes to Microsoft Flight Simulator. All modes that are capable of it will now arm instead of immediately becoming active, and it is even possible to arm into complex compound modes like uh, VPATH and GP simultaneously. We've also worked really hard over the last year to develop a very robust real-time flight plan path vectorization system, open and available to developers, which supports the full range of air ink legs, including curved paths, radius to fix or RF legs, and DME arcs. Even very complex plan legs such as holds, procedure turns, and hold in lieu of procedure turn are fully supported with proper vectorized lateral guidance for all the possible hold entry types. You can see here a great example of the real-time nature of the lateral guidance. Watch as the turn anticipation and path solution changes based on changing aircraft conditions such as wind, track, and ground speed. Finally, the G1000 NXi has full manual sequence leg support, such as those you might get at the end of a departure or arrival procedure, with instructions like expect radar vectors to next assigned fix. In all, it's a fully complete LNAV solution you would have previously been able to find only in high-end third-party add-ons right here now by default in Microsoft Flight Simulator Sim Update 10. Also available now in the new G1000 NXi is fully coupled VNAV capability. Just like the real unit, this allows you to fly a complete procedure-based vertical profile from the sim's procedure nav data. In addition to the real-time lateral flight pathing, the vertical flight path is updated at the same frequency as well, providing correctly placed top of descent and bottom of descent markers and adjusting the path guidance. If you would rather manually define flight plan altitude constraints, the G1000 NXi allows you to do that as well, either by simply scrolling to the altitude in question and changing it in place, or by editing the flight path angle to the next constraint. The guidance system will even calculate the vertical profile through every turn linearly, avoiding the often seen jerky or jumpy VNAV during turns and leg-to-leg -leg transitions. Here, vertical guidance is completely smooth through the turns, just as it is on the real thing. Approaches are such an important piece of IFR flight that we wanted to take special care to make it an accurate and positive piloting experience. Not only are the usual radio-based approaches supported, but a complete RNAV simulation is included as well. The full range of RNAV approach equipment and minima are supported, including LP, LPV, LNAV VNAV, LNAV, and even Garmin Plus V coupled advisory vertical guidance for those approaches which may not normally have such. We also support something brand new added to the real NXi over the original G1000, visual approach procedures. These allow you to create an autopilot-coupled approach procedure to an airport or runway, which does not have any official IFR approach procedure, adding automatic waypoints with computed altitude constraints to give a three-degree glide path angle. Finally, rounding out our approach support is vectors to final, allowing you to activate a vector's approach, for example, if cleared to do so by ATC, making the IFR experience all the more complete. The engine instrument system display has also received plenty of attention. In addition to recreating the EIS gauges with as much visual accuracy as we could, we also added additional functionality seen on the real system. Planes now include an EIS system page, giving the pilot valuable details about exhaust and cylinder head temperatures, 
with simulated variation between each individual reading. Endurance and fuel statistics are also now available, including a faithful fuel totalizer. Applicable piston aircraft will now also have access to the EIS lean page, giving the pilot tools to properly manage their mixture. Activating lean assist will automatically detect both peak EGT as well as provide the delta from that peak for precise and accurate mixture setting. The new G1000 NXI replicates so many features of the real unit that it would be impossible to go over each and every one in the same amount of detail, but here are a few other great features that we think will catch your eye. Next rad, satellite weather. METAR reports from origin and destination airfields, if available. Fully functional HSI moving map. Procedure previews. Specification accurate traffic avoidance system with TAs and proximity alerts. Missed approach procedures. And tons and tons of user customization and settings. As you can see, we and the team at Microsoft Flight Simulator have been hard at work over the last year to deliver you the most authentic G1000 experience that we can, and we're just so enormously excited and humbled to have it be part of the rich legacy that is Microsoft Flight Simulator. But we know that there are going to be a few bumps along the way for folks transitioning to the new G1000 NXI, so here are a few tips, tricks, and gotchas for you to keep in mind while you're flying it. One of the most important gotchas is that the GPS nav mode now arms instead of immediately going active. If you see GPS in white instead of green, GPS mode is only armed, but not yet active. In order for GPS nav mode to become active, you must be on an intercept course to the flight path, and you must be within two dots on the CDI. Once these prerequisites are met, GPS mode will go from arm to active, and will maintain the current course to intercept the GPS flight path. As on the real G1000, at times, flight plan sequencing will be suspended, indicated by the SUSP enunciation in the HSI, as well as SUSP appearing on the PFD soft key, where OBS would normally appear. This means that after the end of the current flight plan leg, LNAV will not automatically sequence to the next leg. This will happen in the following situations when entering a manual sequence leg, upon reaching the missed approach point or hitting the final leg in the flight plan, or upon entering a hold. To exit out of suspend, simply press the SUSP key to advance to the next leg, or you may also go direct to the next leg as well. If you are in a hold, this will also sequence you out of the hold when you reach the hold fix. You may notice, especially if you are already en route the leg to the destination airport, that loading an approach will place the entirety of the approach after the airport itself instead of before. This is normal, matches the behavior of the real unit, and is done very intentionally, as otherwise loading an approach could cause the active leg to change, creating an unsafe and unexpected immediate change in lateral guidance. This allows the pilot time to sequence onto the approach when they decide it is most appropriate to do so. To sequence onto the approach, you may activate the approach, as shown here, which will take you on a direct-to course to the initial approach fix. You may also go direct to any leg in the approach or activate any leg in the approach. Hopefully these few tips help you get the most out of your G1000 experience, but there are a number of wonderful comprehensive videos on the usage of the NXI created by members of the community, and we hope you will check those out as well. And we would just again like to thank the Microsoft Flight Simulator team, testers, the members of the community. We truly, truly couldn't have done it without you, and we hope sincerely that you enjoy flying the new G1000 NXI.